welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today we have a rather light, delicate fantasy news to get through. And we're gonna go ahead and kick it off with the news that yes, I got a copyright strike and I've had a whole lot of people asking me for an update and unfortunately I do not really have one yet. I did submit a counterclaim and the fact that I haven't had any response from that yet, I'm taking as a good sign because it should expire eventually. But the main thing I wanna say is thank you to all of the support I've been getting. It's been genuinely so nice and wonderful and there are some business moves happening on my end to try and assure this won't be a problem in the future. As for manga videos overall though, I still plan on continuing to do them at least until I'm finishing Berserk. There's no way I'm letting that go. But if I end up getting a second copyright strike, I may have to move them to Patreon for like a dollar a month or something like that. But I promise I will keep you posted. But for now, let's continue on to the Cosmere news. Because Dragonsteel happened last week and at the convention for the Cosmere, Sanderson announced some pretty big news in terms of upcoming Cosmere. Cosmere releases. Nothing Hollywood related though. I know a lot of people were suspecting that, but he even started one of the presentations by going, look, I know a lot of you want a Hollywood update. It's not happening this week, which I appreciated at the top. But the exciting update here is that these secret projects will be additionally published outside of the Kickstarter in case you missed it, meaning you can still get your hands on them. Tor and Golanx will be putting them out with official release dates of April of 2023, June of 2023, October of 2023, and January of 2024. For. Yes, they're still coming to the people who order them on Kickstarter first. This is just when they'll be available to everyone who possibly missed that. In addition to that, though, we also got the titles and descriptions of these projects, and I will be going over them. If you would like to remain spoiler free, see Tor, this is how you do this, go ahead and skip to this timestamp right here. Now, frustratingly, if you want to pre order these personally for yourself and not have the titles spoiled for you, they are up for pre order on Amazon with their official titles. So, how you're going to go about doing that? I recommend clicking very quickly. At this point, I'm just talking a little bit to make sure anyone who's far away from their phone has time to come and skip. And in three, two, one. Here's the first project. Tress of the Emerald Sea, described as go deeper into the Cosmere universe with this rollicking, riveting tale that will appeal to fans of the Princess Bride. Followed by the Frugal Wizard's Handbook for Surviving Medieval England, Jason Bourne meets epic fantasy in a captivating adventure that throws an amnesiac wizard into time-traveling shenanigans, where his only hope of survival lies in recovering his missing memories followed by Yumi and the Nightmare Painter, a gripping story set in the Cosmere universe told by Hoyd, where two people from incredibly different worlds must compromise and work together to save their own worlds from ruin. And then finally, the Sunlit Man, in a future in the Cosmere universe, a perpetually planetary wanderer must decide whether to keep running or stay and make a difference on a struggling planet. But finally, we are going to pull away from Sanderson news and talk about some Tad Williams news. I don't know why I made that so growly, but yeah. Because Dow Books has acquired two fantasy novels by Tad Williams. The first of the two books scheduled for fall of 2024 is The Splintered Sun, set in Williams' beloved and well-known fantasy world of Austin Ard. The Splintered Sun follows the adventures of Robin Hobb-esque figure Flan Alderwood and his band of misfit rebels in one of Austin Ard's oldest and strangest cities, Crunchier? And there's nothing I can find on the second one. But that being said, I know I butchered those pronunciations, but as a Tad Williams fan, I am still excited to see this being done. For massive fans of First Law or A Song of Ice and Fire or Robin Hobb who are looking for more fantasy in that vein, I recommend you give Tad Williams a try if you have not already. Unfortunately, we must venture forth now from my place of fantasy comfort into a realm I'm not entirely familiar with. And that is because we are seeing some rumblings over in the Magic the Gathering world. When after announcing a more than usual amount of new Magic the Gathering cards with a pretty high price tag, at least from an outsider looking in, the company responsible for putting out Magic the Gathering, Hasbro, saw a greater than 5% sink in its stock. Now this is not a fandom I am very familiar with, so if you have any clarifying information or want to correct me for just being wrong, please do so in the comments down below. I'm more than happy to pin someone there. But it seems to have been a rising complaint for a little while with how Magic the 
Gathering is being handled by Hasbro. While no doubt the card game is wildly successful, still, for major collectors of the card game, they're apparently a bit upset with how much they are getting due to concern of just one, being flooded with too much content, and two, the possible devaluation of rare cards. To be perfectly honest, after looking into this, I don't want to attribute all of this downturn for Hasbro for just Magic the Gathering of note. Yes, their stock at the beginning of the year was at 106, it's already down to 60, so it's not exactly been the best year for them regardless. And the reason I'm covering this though is as someone who is not very into Magic the Gathering, but certainly loves keeping up with niche community news for some reason, let me know what you think about this, let me know what you think of this coverage more importantly, and I would encourage anyone to actually look through the comments of this video to get further clarification or greater insight into what exactly is happening here. Okay, I'm done with being in the discomfort zone, let's go back to where I'm comfortable. You know where I'm very comfortable? Witcher. Because the official Witcher account has confirmed that yes, indeed, as I thought was already known, the next-gen update for Witcher 3 will be free for anyone who already has the game, and be available December 14th of this year. I was happy to see them reply to a comment asking if there will still be a physical edition, to which they said yes at a later date. But hey, we're still getting it. And I was really good friends in college with a guy who loved collecting video game box art, so ever since then that's something where I'm like, yeah, make sure the fans can get some art. And in sad news for pirate fans, it seems that Margot Robbie Pirate of the Caribbean movie is not going to be happening. This franchise is already a thousand times more successful than I ever thought it would be growing up, and while I'm not really bummed out that this movie isn't happening, it's not something I was very emotionally attached to, I do enjoy the pirating genre and would like to see more pirate films put out that aren't necessarily Pirates of the Caribbean. It feels like for many reasons that franchise has just kind of run its course far beyond what it had any right to initially. Not that it's like all horrible, it's just kind of like, are we really still doing the thing off the ride at Disney? And if there's going to be a new pirate wave, let's let it be its own thing. Certainly Disney has enough as is. Yeah! Oh, it's about aliens. I don't need to speak alien. My bad. Saying again, yes, a brand new alien film is in development with Kaylee Spaney set to star, Feta Elvarez being tapped to direct, and Scott Free producing with plans to get in front of the camera for this film by 2023. I've made it well known here on the channel. I'm an alien fan. But that being said, what about the Ridley? There's still a Ridley Scott thing happening or not? I don't even know anymore. It's tough being an alien fan, man. Although with the recent success of Prey, it felt almost inevitable that this was gonna happen. They're just linked now. And finally, answering the great mystery from the last episode of Fantasy News, where we covered that Studio Ghibli tweeted out a little teaser between them and Lucas Films. Well, what is the answer? What shall it be? Unfortunately, it's not like an Old Republic Jedi war film or something like that, but if you're a fan of the aww, it's apparently quite aww, because the official collaboration is Grogu and Dust Bunnies, a hand-drawn animation by Studio Ghibli, is streaming tomorrow on Disney+, Plus. and tomorrow for this tweet was back a little bit, so it's out now if you wanna go see it. Hashtag Disney must pay, hashtag Aw. But this has just been your latest episode of Fantasy News. Like and subscribe if you have not already, and hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. I got, I got books, I got merch. Have a good one, y'all. Peace. I also want to apologize for being so clearly tired during filming. I just realized that upon editing it, I am exhausted and it comes across. I just flew back from Dragon Steel and stayed up really late to get you that lost metal review. So yeah. I'm a sleepy goblin. And of course, I'm recording a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreons, Celestina, Libria, and Jake LaMotta.